name is Michael Uventhal, and I'm the Senior Education Specialist at the IRIS Consortium. Today, I wanted to share a presentation with you about some of the changes that we've made to IRIS's undergraduate uh, internship program in order to make that program more inclusive and, in turn, allow that program to make contributions to increasing the diversity of the seismology community more broadly. Before we begin with the actual talk, I want to add two notes. One is that um, the, the changes, the tweaks that we've seen here are some of the highlights. Uh, they're not all that we've done, but they really are touching on sort of the high points that we think were, were very impactful to the program. And number two, we also wanted to acknowledge that these changes didn't happen in a vacuum. In parallel, uh, during the time period that we were um, working on making these changes, we recognized that the geoscience community more broadly uh, was also making changes uh, across um, uh, the full spectrum of the field. And so lots of new programs were also being developed. So it is difficult to tease out uh, exactly whether these changes were solely attributable to the changes that we made or uh, more likely uh, to the sort of common set of changes that were happening uh, broadly within the field. So as many of you know, the IRIS internship program uh, was initiated in 1998. And our work on making these sorts of changes started in 2006 when the uh, internship program first applied for uh, research experiences for undergraduate site funding from the National Science Foundation. And at that point, 30% uh, of the applications identified as female and 20% of the interns identified as female. Uh, no data was currently being collected on the percentage of underrepresented minority applicants. Uh, and none of the interns identified as a member of the underrepresented minority community at this point. Uh, we only have data on women and men at this point as well, uh, because we were only asking a binary gender item at that time. So we had lots of room for growth, and we began to make this change by explicitly committing to it. And so in 2006, we changed the goal of the program uh, from just focusing on creating research opportunities early in students' educational careers to inspire them. Uh, but we also included that we wanted to encourage more students representing a more diverse population to choose careers in the earth sciences and seismology. And so over the performance period of this award, we began to develop a set of outcomes that we felt would allow us to sort of measure our progress toward this goal. And the, in this uh, really focused on two key areas. The first was that we wanted to attract a more diverse population. And so we were going to measure this or track it by looking at the diversity of the applications the program received. And two, we wanted to encourage a more diverse population. And we were going to monitor this by looking at the diversity of the interns um, themselves that participated in the program. So in order to address the first outcome, uh, we needed to get more uh, diverse communities applying to the program to begin with. And so we said so. We went out and changed our advertising uh, in the look and the feel of it, as well as the language of it, to say, look, we're excited to receive applications from students representing the full spectrum of society, as well as those with lived experiences, uh, such as students with disabilities, veterans, and non-traditional students. Um, you know, these are just simple examples, but they really do put out the welcoming mat for more diverse communities um, to feel like they're included. Of course, e-recruiting, changing flyers and pictures on websites and text isn't enough. Uh, we also recognized that we needed to go out and find these communities and talk to these communities uh, about what our program and our field can offer. And so one of the key ways we did this was through the alumni lecture series. And this is where alumni of the internship program who are in graduate school or in um, early in their professional careers uh, were going out and giving talks at campuses that ha had um, large uh, percentages of underrepresented minority students at it um, and frequently didn't have access to seismology. Uh, and so these were often math, physics and computer science majors um, who you know, didn't have a geoscience major to take on campus. Um, but they thought they might be interested in applying their skills uh, to a career in seismology. And the alumni mentor uh, specifically addressed these issues in their talks. So it was a little bit of a research talk, uh, but it was also a lot of sort of how my career evolved. And I went from kind of where you are uh, currently as undergraduates to being where I'm at now. Uh, and the other um, element that happened in addition to generating applications for our program was it also created um, 
you know, partnerships uh, and created relationships that we feel are really important. And, you know, a key one of those is with Fort Valley State University in Georgia, uh, where we annually recruit applicants to the program, uh, but have more recently been collaborating with them on their Geopaths grant that we supported them while they're writing. And we've been supporting them as they have been seeking to embed more geophysics uh, into their chemistry courses um, through some modules that IRIS is developing. Um, and that so far is off to a great start and is one example of, of these types of partnerships. So now that we've recruited um, students who want to apply, we need to create an application that is inclusive and accommodates the diversity of experiences that these populations will bring. And so a simple way to address this is shown by this first bullet here where we tweaked uh, the sort of standard question you know, what are your work experiences? What are your activities? What are the awards and recognitions that you've received? And we kind of flipped that around. And we felt like the reason we did this was because we felt like, you know, when students list these things, um, it forces us to interpret the value of the things that they list. And they may or may not fall within our value structures. Um, we decided what was more important was that we understood why the students placed value on these things and how well they were making connections between those values and our program. And so now we ask, what qualities and characteristics will you bring to our program as a result of your work, activities, and other life experiences? Additionally, we also ask a catch-all question uh, to capture the full diversity of experiences that are out there that we might not think to ask specifically about. And so we ask students if there's anything else that we'd like them, or they would like to communicate to the selection committee that hasn't already been covered. And students use this everything from uh, saying, no, it's already been answered, to telling us about a bad semester they had because of something happened to them, uh, or even communicating to us the pronouns that they would prefer to use when being communicated with. Uh, a wide variety of uh, things get communicated in that box. And we feel we know the students better. The next thing uh, that we changed for the application was we uh, did a better job of communicating with the referees. Um, so this year we included language that directly uh, noted the, um, uh, the occurrence of gender bias and racial bias uh, that can happen in le letters of recommendation sometimes. And so we provided resources for students um, to send off to their referees in with the instructions on how to write the letter. And the hope was that um, we would get faculty to be more conscientious by educating them about this and create better letters. And so, you know, we've just finished up our um, application pool for this year. Um, so we're still looking at seeing how things went, um, but we hope to probe this more deeply as we go forward. So now that we have recruited students to the program, we've accommodated them through creating a more inclusive application. The next step is really the selection process. And so I don't want to go into too much detail about the selection process other than to highlight the overall philosophy that we use. And here we use a portfolio optimization philosophy. The goal is that we want to create heterogeneous groupings of students. We want some students that we would think of as sure bets. You're going to get a return on your best investment every time. And these are the students that we often think of um, as having, you know, five classes of math coursework over their career. All are straight A's, highest performers in those classes. They already have uh, lots of undergraduate research experiences. They maybe even have presented or published a paper uh, on that research. Um, these are, we think of like bonds, right? Like we're going to get a good return on that investment and it's a sure bet. On the other hand, we also want to recruit a spectrum of students that have um, a, some risk to them and then also have some greater reward to them. And so these are candidates that we would think of like stocks and they have a full spectrum of risk and reward to them. And then we allow the portfolio um, risk tolerance to be determined by the selection panel, as long as they're looking beyond sort of a growth portfolio. So we're shooting for at least 30 percent bonds every year, and we'd like to have about 70 percent stocks or students that are you know, a little riskier, but have some chances for some greater rewards. And so, you know, this is important because it's emphasizing learning potential in seismology over past successes in seismology. And just one simple example of this might be a student who attends a liberal arts school where there's no seismologist, and they may not get the best advising in terms of what coursework and other preparation they should take 
but they're really passionate about seismology and do a good job of communicating that uh, in the rest of their uh, application. And so we've created these opportunities for learning potential to be rewarded with placements in the program, um, though we still do need some sure bets. The other aspect is now that we've recruited students to the program, we've gotten them to apply, we've selected them, now we need to acknowledge the diversity once they're in the program and provide ways to support it. And these are just simple examples of ways that we go about doing that. Um, it's everything from asking about their disability statuses so that we can design uh, programming that best fits their needs. Right. So if we have students who have visual impairments, uh, we need to design our field trips in ways that allow those students to participate. Or um, we address gender and sexuality issues when we're dealing with housing surveys or classroom surveys. Um, you know, in addition to asking things like, are you a messy person or a neat person? We also want to know what your bathroom preferences are. Uh, we want to know how you prefer to room and what's, uh, what gender you prefer, prefer to room with. Um, and there's lots of help out there for um, issues that may come up when you encounter some of these disabilities that you may be new to dealing with. Um, there's support out there through organizations like IAGD that can help uh, with these sorts of things. And the next piece is uh, that we want to address is um, creating a culture and a climate um, that is really supportive. And we do this through the development of an anti-harassment and discrimination curriculum that we have worked on in addition to three other REU sites. Um, and this is available online at the URL shown on the screen. Um, and it's designed to be implemented both in person and online. And so what's exciting about this curriculum is that it educates students, but it also empowers them uh, around issues of, of civil behaviors in the workplace. Uh, and this is because action is emphasized in the, in the coursework. Um, it's about how to report harassment and discrimination, what it looks like, and how you um, would deal with it should something like that occur. And by dealing with it, we also include um, practice with bystander interventions for students to provide them with um, examples of ranges of responses so they can plan and practice you know, ways they might intervene should they witness an incident of discrimination or harassment over the summer. And the students are very positive about this course. Um, and one of the um, benefits that you know, we came across very clearly through the evaluations of this, um, of this curriculum were that it, this asserts your stand on these issues as a program and it makes the program's uh, expectations and for behavior very explicit for everyone uh, involved. So how have all of these changes uh, affected our program to date? Well, we're showing two data sets here on the screen. Uh, the blue data is showing the percentage of female both applicants, uh, the dashed line, and the female interns, the solid line, uh, that are, have been in our program each year. Uh, the percentages of underrepresented minority applicants and underrepresented minority interns are shown with the orange dashed and solid lines respectively. And you can see that from when we started in 2006, in both categories, we have made steady and incremental change uh, as we head to uh, the right hand side of the screen. I do want to highlight the two colored percentages on the left, 40% uh, and 10%, uh, because these are showing the uh, roughly the average uh, percentage of geoscience degrees that are awarded to each of these groups uh, in uh, according to the AGI data from 2019. So as you can see, we are doing uh, much better uh, in terms of revert, recruiting and encouraging uh, a diverse population through our program uh, than the geoscience degrees are being awarded to more broadly. I also want to end with this note that this success hasn't come at the cost of quality of the program. 91% of our mentors on average still agree and strongly agree that the selection committee has provided them with well-qualified interns to do the research that they want to get done over the summer. And importantly, 92% of the interns agree or strongly agree that their internship was one of the best learning experiences that they have ever had. So we can do both. We can run successful programs and we can ensure that they include diverse populations in them uh, and are supporting the community more broadly. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up and take questions.